Sholly, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. Hey, Italian man. Huh? Ah! What is going on here? Oh! Can I got shut the fuck up here? Yeah? Hello and welcome back to Wish for Pancake. I, I mean, Wish for Potatoes Island. I mean, I'm hungry and I want to record this before I cook something in the afternoon. Island. Today we're going to talk about the lowest rated media on Rotten Tomatoes of all time. We're going to talk about something so bad, the entire Egyptian government is trash talking it and there's a lawsuit underway because of the damage that is being done. <laughs> something that, as an African born person myself, honestly offended me too, so I have to talk about it. This is four episodes, each around 40 minutes, and was created by El Diablo herself as part of some special about black queens in history. It's not going exactly Exactly as they planned. Now, I'm not a history channel, so I'm not going to be talking about the accuracies of everything or the order of the events or even the exact proof that we have of like certain racial factors at play. I know the basics like any normal person should, enough to know that there's something incredibly wrong here, but I'm obviously not somebody who knows so much that I can give a real proper breakdown that people deserve. There are many great people who already are doing that so I will just respectfully support them in doing so and I'm basically treating this like a fictional piece in the same way that I would a CW series like you know Batwoman or even something that's like a terrible period drama based on real events but doesn't actually have any real events involved something like that because it does have some real events but it's a documentary meant for propaganda purposes or fan fiction purposes so I don't see why I need to treat it with respect respect at all. You know what we do on this channel, we're here to make fun of shit. Let's see how long we last. The narration immediately states, before we even get into the proper documentary, that before modernity as we know it, women were somehow ruling and being free and history lied by saying women weren't kangs but they totally were. There was a time long ago when women ruled with unparalleled power as warriors, queens, mothers of nations. <laughs> this narration describes the queens as if they're all perfect beings, actual gods descending from the heavens, and somehow women were super oppressed, but at the same time, we was kangs, and like, I, I guess that's white people's fault or something, I don't fucking know. The first expert is this old fruitcake who says that her grandma said that Queen Cleopatra is black and that's all the evidence that she needs. This is an expert. <laughs> and I remember, clear as day, her saying to me, Sholly, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. They also acknowledge Macedonian heritage and Greeks and all of that kind of stuff. They acknowledge it. They acknowledge that this is what the main thing was here. I don't know how she's black. I have no idea how they're gonna fit that in. Then some other random bitch says that Cleopatra was the first scholar because no one else before her cared about knowledge and shit. Cleopatra was first and foremost a scholar. Because she was very learned. She studies the Egyptian language. They also try to make her look so quirky and cute by like, Oh my god, she's eating snacks in the library. She's just like me, for real, for real. She was a scientist. She knew all the science. It's so relatable. She was going to be queen because she was so cool reading about all the other queens and being a girl boss. She becomes the queen because her dad dies and the acting is just... Wonderful. <laughs> Rulers of Egypt because... I already know that you can tell how credible these sources are. In this day and age, you can go to any piece of shit university or any piece of shit website, do anything you want for the cash flow, 
and you're just good to go. There are so many fat activists condemning people to death by encouraging them to just eat anything until their heart gives out. And these people do have what look like real credentials. But when you look into it a bit further and you look at the anti-common sense that they're preaching, you can obviously tell that there are specific places purely designed for you to look like you're qualified so that you can preach for the right type of propaganda and get your paycheck. That's all this is here. Especially with that opening about how this bitch's grandmother was, was the, the authority on everything, I suppose. Damn, everybody in Egypt's black, what the fuck? When I look at you, I see me. Fitting comment. There's also a bunch of stuff here that I'm kind of skipping out because it's more about the throne and and I'm just gonna try and make fun of the acting and some of the really obviously bad stuff that they're saying. So with the king dead, ass in the way, Cleopatra's sister, is gonna butt heads with her and fight for power or something. We'll be doing things differently from now on. All of this just works. Was a very Game of Thrones kind of environment. Oh my god, Game of Thrones, like literally, it's like that TV show, like, oh my god, so relatable. I love how they don't even say anything about her being black. They haven't said anything about it yet, they're just like, yeah, she's black. <laughs> and, then, and then they don't even... They're just like, so we all know that she's black. And then they go rec recite some shit from like Wikipedia. <laughs> You should be a scholar and leave Egypt in the hands of idiots. No, I can't be a scholar. We've established I'm very smart and basically I marry Sue, but I'm also such a good person I need to control everything for the greater good instead of working on my 17 books, curing cancer, discovering immortality, and finding the best way to season your chicken after you wash it with soap. And people find comfort in traditions. It's time for some new traditions. Yeah, fuck all that old important shit that's probably there for a reason. I'm bored, it's about me now. Also, her female advisors are also black and like super cool and girl boss and awesome and the scholars are always so misogynistic because they overlook how cool and awesome and black they are. Did I mention how fucking awful the soundtrack is as well? She then marries her brother so that he doesn't try to fuck her over during the ruling because they were supposed to rule in tandem and the marriage is the way for a political play or whatever. The finest wants to be the real power. Cleopatra stands in the way. What the fuck are you nodding at? You're nodding at something off screen? Our populations in Egypt as a whole, of course, so we have native Egyptians, we have the Greek peoples who came in with the Ptolemies, and then we also have a very sizable Jewish population. So, so which group made Black Cleopatra happen? I'm just curious. You're explaining all of these other races here, why aren't you explaining why she's Black? <laughs> it's almost like you don't have any evidence. So. Cleopatra fucking complains the entire time that they're looking at the poor people when she's doing the rounds as the new queen. They're very into describing the gods and the rituals because we have evidence more or less for most of that, but they don't explain anything about any of the other things you might be questioning. <laughs> they also keep emphasizing that she wants to be known as Egyptian, and I just find that really, really funny. She practiced the Egyptian religion. She wants to be remembered as Egyptian. <laughs> we don't know who Cleopatra's mother was. Ancient Egyptians would have had a variety of different complexions, um, as we find in other African cultures today. <laughs> it seems very strange that we insist on depicting her as a holy European. <laughs> Everyone can imagine her in their own way. I imagine her to have curly hair like me and a similar skin colour. <laughs> right, there it is. All they say is that they don't know and she could be Egyptian and could be black so it's certain that she's black because they don't know. <laughs> this person also says that we always depict her as a European. We might have in like, what, the 50s? But now she's clearly known as like an Egyptian person. She, she's, she has fair skin, but that doesn't mean that she's a European. What the fuck are you talking about? This is the same argument that those idiots made about the in, in the interview that they did. They're like, just because she was played 
she was played as like a white person in some old media that isn't accurate at all because it's like goofy old media that no one is taking seriously. But then they're like, okay, because white people have done this sometimes, that means that we're okay with making lies about this as well. Like, <laughs> I don't understand how you can dress yourself in the morning if you have such a dumb brain that you think that this is a good argument. We don't know what she looks like, so we can all imagine her looking like ourselves. You fucking narcissist. It's almost like they're ignoring every fucking depiction of her that shows her being not black. And they're like, no, she's totally black. Because they, they watch that, that fucking Katy Perry video that everyone hates. And they're like, no, this, this is clearly evidence of, of anti-black propaganda. <laughs> Throughout this as well, this bitch fucking smirks at the camera, she just faces the camera and smiles. The shit-eating grin because she knows exactly what's going on. One of the reasons why this particularly pissed me off is because of the attitude that these people, specifically the Americans, I'm sorry but I have to say this, specifically these people that they have where they think that they understand anything about Africa. You grew up in the US. You have the experience of someone who lives in the US, but then you go and you, you take things from African culture that you do not understand because you've never stepped foot there before and you act like you understand it and that this is yours, th that it belongs to you. And when someone argues against you because you, you're just appropriating a shit, you decide that they're racist or that whatever. When you have no nothing but privilege in your life, like, Go to- I, I invite you to go to the, the shit-ass, ghetto-ass neighborhood that I was born in, in in South Africa. And go go there with your fancy watches and your fancy jewelry and your name brand clothing. Go walk around there and see what happens. You don't know anything about what it's like to be in Africa. You don't know anything about what it's like to grow up there. You don't know anything about Africa because you don't care. You don't want to know anything. You're an American person and you decided that it's fun and cute and cool to cosplay as something that you consider to be special. I know, I can tell you accounts of the apartheid and violent racial protests and shit from back in the day from my family members. How when you go back there now, it's still a deeply scary, poor, fucked up place because it never healed past that stage. Everything is fucked up. You can't go anywhere without constantly looking over your shoulder. There's armed guards at every single corner because of anything that could break out at any moment. You get used to seeing violence. There's a reason why I don't live there anymore. And people are just looking at it being like, Lo, Wakanda, Wakanda, like shut the fuck up, you don't know anything. You and your stupid American bullshit. Not only that, but the whole reason that they're trying to do this is some stupid emotional heartstring thing where they're like, a little black girl can now imagine that she's Cleopatra. Like, what about the little Egyptian girl that might think that Cleopatra is important to her and her culture? Are you just saying that one is more important than the other because of your own political propaganda? You don't think that the little girls everywhere need something to look up to? You don't care about all of them, you just care about the ones that you think are special. Even though you're looking at somebody else's culture, that is honestly someone else's culture because it's not yours. You don't grow, you didn't grow up there. You don't know what it's like, but you like pretending that you do because it makes you feel like you have a purpose. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. So, in Cleopatra world, there's a drought going on. She's like, we have to feed them because uh, I'm I'm the best. <laughs> then this old grandma is like, it's two men in Rome that are fighting for power. They're not cool like black woman Cleopatra who's perfect and cool and nice. They're men and they fight and fighting's not cool. Once again, it's about power. It's two men. Cleopatra's little brother is also fucking wrong about everything and angry and stupid. Cleopatra gets mad at him because he's stupid and he's being ma manipulated by what is essentially bald Scar, <laughs> trying to be a dumb bitch. It's kind of funny how the palest guy in the court is the evil one. <laughs> Anyways, there's some palace coup and Cleo has to leave so she goes to Thebes. This one bald advisor is clearly being ADR'd and it's like the worst thing I've ever heard. It's like a Chinese dub. <laughs> Achilles will be commanding your brother's army. You'll need men who will not cower. Can you speak English? They plan to fight back after the coup and this idiot says she got exiled and that's not good so that's pretty bad. <laughs> Cleopatra is raised in Alexandria. It's part of her. So 
being exiled. It was probably quite a hurtful experience for her. There's also an obligatory badass female fight scene that's heavily edited so that you can't see how little sense it makes, with some shitty like girl power music playing. This is also when they do that big woman empowerment speech and the girl boss speech and they, they make it sound like they- and I quote say that she was on the front lines. Like later on, I forgot which episode it is, editor me will put it in, but they say that she was on the front lines. This grandma is always looking up to the heavens and running out of breath like she's trying to climb the staircase. <laughs> and she's making shit up on the spot. I, I think she is making shit up on the spot. But I think it's funny anyways, because I'm still treating this as fiction. Caesar shows up, he's he's an angry man. The other dude, I think his cousin or something, is dead. And Cleopatra's sad about that, so she shows up and like deals with it because she's a girl boss. Obviously Caesar is portrayed as like a, an angry white man. I laugh at the idea of Cleopatra being smuggled in on a carpet because it's not factual. And, and you know, it's kind of funny <laughs> that they're saying that. The, uh, a propaganda uh, attempt to sway the Roman public away from Cleopatra. So she now is this temptress uh, as opposed to being this beautiful woman that everybody was attracted to. History rewrote her as a slut. In reality, she was so beautiful that everyone wanted to fuck her and she looked just like me by the way, for real, for real. Okay, why does Caesar whisper all of his dialogue like his parents are sleeping in the other room and he'll get in trouble if he swears on the Xbox? You repaid that kindness. I have planned to bring him back home to Rome. <laughs> yeah, boy. And she was an African woman who saw herself not only as a ruler, but as a goddess as well. Every single time she is mentioned doing anything, she could be taking a shit. And they are constantly fucking mentioning how perfect and cool and hot she is for minutes on end. Caesar loves Cleopatra because she is better than him and they trash Roman women for having to stay at home all day and not being as hot and cool as Cleopatra. Even though they also say that the reason that Roman women were staying at home is because they were forced to. So it's like, are you shitting on them because you think they're inferior or are you shitting on them for like being oppressed? I don't know. Anyway, Caesar fucks her and then he gives her some baby juice. So in accordance with the last will and testament of Ptolemy. This dude was smoking a pack a day for 700 years. The young brother also gets uppity and is like, Stop fucking my sister, it's my job, I'm angry. And everyone laughs at him. This lady then says the brilliant statement, The war was scary, so it was pretty scary. This four month period of these terrible wars would have been very frightening. We have to this would have been catastrophic and terrifying. <laughs> Cleopatra discovers that she's pregnant. This one dude who wrote this shitty book that's being hawked throughout this thing looks like he's about to bust a nut every time he speaks. <laughs> like, this is just fan fiction. One of her siblings that staged the coup dies and the other one gets trafficked to some other place. She's just grumpy, I guess. Ass in the way is no longer in the way. Cleopatra shits out a baby and everything's cool, but unfortunately, ass in the way is still in the way after all. Caesar gets cancelled for the idea of killing her, so she send he sends her somewhere else, but Cleo doesn't know. When Cleo discovers this, she gets big mad. She takes her baby to Rome in the hopes that Caesar will claim the child so that he can have the throne as a successor or some shit. Cleopatra then gets mad at him for not killing ass in the way, but he says that ass in the way is secure in the prison ass, so it's fine. He also says any promise I make to you does not supersede a promise to my people, which makes sense. I mean, he's a, he's a patriotic dude, but she gets all pissy about it, I guess. She's also described as an olden day gold digger who fucks if they got money, and that's apparently a good thing. There's also a long drawn out fairly fan fiction type sex scene where all of these experts are cooming at the idea of Cleopatra fucking people like you you think I'm exaggerating I'm playing some of the footage you can tell in their eyes that something weird is happening this is so drawn out as well and they keep going like she was she was like sexually so special she literally blew him away in bed like no other woman Egyptian women weren't liked in Rome because they were too powerful and they didn't like the patriarchy so all the men in Rome shitted on Cleopatra and they were racist and misogynistic because she is so powerful and girl boss and cool. This Edna bitch is always smiling like she just set her neighbor's house on fire. 
before coming into the studio type of smiling. They also imply that Cleopatra was directly the, re the reason why we have the 365 day calendar. But Cleopatra is also kind of upset because she doesn't get Caesarino or whatever the fuck his name is to become the heir. So she goes home and everyone in the Roman court kind of hates her, which is hilarious to me. I wonder why they didn't make Caesar black for this too, honestly. <laughs> If they're just gonna make shit up. I swear the baby keeps changing race. Like during the birth segment, he looks white. Now he looks black. Uh, he looks brown sometimes. <laughs> Who is this bitch? Why do they keep swapping babies? <laughs> what is this acting? <laughs> so now that Caesar's dead, ass in the way is gonna get back in the way. And Cleopatra is gonna get fucked up or some shit. This part's kind of boring, so I'm gonna skip it. Cleopatra is about as emotional as a block of wood. She's so boring to watch. She doesn't give a single fuck and she keeps staring at the camera with this like constipated face. It's like it's like watching that one bitch ass who played that character that I don't like in Star Wars that I forgot about already. <laughs> now she wants to fuck Mark, Mark Anthony. Why is that dubstep playing? With then ass in the way dies so her ass is no longer in the way. They be fucking. Cleopatra is pregnant again and she's screaming and being stupid. The only time that she doesn't look like a block of wood is when she's trying to shit out a baby. Stop staring at me! Mark Antony doesn't care about his side bitch and ignores her babies. This grandma takes it real personally. But he doesn't come back for three years. Mark Antony? Not a word. Not a word. What's going on, big guy? So he realizes that he fucked up and he needs her, so she sasses him about leaving her a single mama and he's like, oh, okay, I fucked up, sorry. Then she gets pregnant again. This one dude is the worst. He speaks like he's trying to sound relatable to the kids. Then life got in the way, and life for them is kind of like very serious. I said, do not disturb me! I'm a surgeon. Stop! They basically say that Cleopatra rules and Mark does what she says, so all of the victory is her doing, but all of the bad things that happened are his doing. You know that emoji where the head explodes? Okay, Grandma, take your meds. Then they talk about how Cleopatra is a war genius who was actually on the front lines. Like, they actually say front lines. Like, she went there and fought herself, like, with a, with a sword. And she... She's not a leader who's in the palace. She's very much on the front line. No! No! What a genius! Then Cleopatra runs away and leaves back to Egypt because she doesn't want to do it anymore. And then Mark Antony is like angry. <laughs> I'm so fucking bored. <laughs> Mark and Cleopatra no be fucking anymore, it's pretty sad. They say that she's the best mum ever, also she is perfect, she is also the best mum ever, ever in the world. She's literally perfect because she basically is the gods. I don't think any of these children have spoken a single word this entire time, and the one time they did, it was way too soft because of the obnoxious piano and the lack of good audio editing. I won't forget. Cleopatra was not a romantic. At the beginning she was, but now she's not, and, and now there's emphasis that she's not a romantic, and then now she is. Cleopatra was framed as a, a drunk and a witch, and that's misogynistic and xenophobic, I, I guess. I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't care, I, I just wanna eat- I wanna eat potatoes. <laughs> So Cleopatra decides to go aggro because she's losing the war. She hides in a tomb with her wealth and she says that as long as her children are hidden away from everyone else, she can die because she's happy that they will keep Egypt alive or some shit. They also blame Shakespeare for Cleopatra being seen as kind of a shitbag, but she was actually super cool and like didn't do anything bad. Looks like your African sorcery failed you this time. Oh, come on. Then he goes on about how beautiful she is or some something. She calls him short, and he's so shooketh by this he doesn't have a proper response. They talked about black people like once this entire series, and then the entire other time, they decided that they're gonna talk about how cool she is, and then like drawn out sex scenes, and then she kills herself by by eating like a like like a piece of ham. It's it's it, it was really bad. It was vegan meat, so it it tastes so bad that she died. Facts, by the way, like actual facts. I am I am a historian. If you disagree with me, you're racist. She died because she ate impossible meat. But her killing herself means that she won because she she's dead and she pissed him off. Therefore, she won. They made this big deal about how dying with poison 
isn't actually factual because they don't know for sure what happened but the entire reenactment was her dying from poison in this like 10 minute sequence they also go on about how rome made egypt bad because we was kangs and shit and then they killed caesarino so r.i.p but then they talk about her daughter because her daughter ended up marrying someone else and ruling over a bit of a kingdom thing and like doing some stuff that her mother did like preserving jewels in a certain way and making a mausoleum and stuff like that and then they immediately jump on that bitch and say that she is the new cleopatra because she is like literally so black and so perfect you guys like because cleopatra is dead they're like no no this one now this one is the new cleopatra she's all of the stuff that is literally me oh my god I bet you if they had more records on like the this the lineage they would find whoever that person was and be like no no you're literally black <laughs> you're literally me <laughs> fuck off Bereit? 